I played in my first North American Scrabble Championship in 2010, and since then, I haven't missed a year. But the Scrabble world is much larger than just North America, and over that span of time, I've never been able to compete in the World Championship. That's why I was so excited this past July to compete in my first ever World Scrabble Championship in Las Vegas, Nevada. With well over 100 elite players from around the world competing and only two spots in the finals up for grabs, my only goals going into the event were to enjoy the top level competition and take each game one move at a time. Amazingly, after the first day of play, I found myself with an undefeated 8-0 record, sitting atop the standings in first place. I was getting extremely lucky, as evidenced by my scoring average of nearly 500 points per game, so I figured I would try to enjoy my time in first place while it lasted. But day two came and went with an even tougher set of opponents, and yet there I was, halfway through and still in first place. I felt sure I would fall back to earth on day three, but after another grueling set of eight games, I was again in first place by the day's end. With just one more day of games to go, I didn't even need to hold on to the top spot. I just needed to stay in the top two, and I would make the finals. Early on during day four, I faced a critical battle with the UK's Harshan Lamabadu Saria, a grandmaster player who I had played and beaten earlier in the tournament. The resulting game was one I'll remember for a long time. I had the first move, and with only one vowel and two Vs on my rack, I opted to exchange, leaving the powerful ERS combination. Harshan responded with his only available bingo of Emocore, while I drew balanced tiles and played Ermelins, an archaic variant of the animal fur ermine. After Harshan's follow-up of easier for 14, I had a few reasonable choices. I opted for Cilium rather than Ewe for 8 more points, reasoning that Harshan was likely to have another E after easier, which would allow him to parallel Ewe on the triple lane, forming U. I was right, Harshan had retained an E after easier, but I had also inadvertently blocked his bingo of Painter through the I. Instead, he played Pun, leaving strong bingo tiles, and I answered with Towsy for 49, hooking Puny, more than enough points to warrant keeping the clunky Q. Without a playable bingo, Harshan underlapped Towsy with O for a surprisingly solid 25 points. I was fortunate to draw a U to pair with my Q, and although I had Queen for 54 points here, I sacrificed 4 points to play Quep, an obsolete expression of mockery to keep the NG combo together in hopes of drawing an I. Harshan instantly laid down a beautiful bingo of Terawatt to the T of Towsy, while I drew another balanced bingo rack of my own. I played Rained for 74 points, but I left 8 points on the table here, with a really nice overlap of reading, forming Crew, Poem, Your, and Ned. Harshan covered up the dangerous scoring spot at 8D with Aland, and I responded with Fob for 31, praying for vowels to save my four consonant leave. After a lovely response of Glout with several tricky overlaps, I was glad to draw three vowels, but my relief quickly turned to discomfort as I spotted a word I wasn't sure of through the G, a goddess. I was familiar with other variations of this word that made a goddess seem plausible. Ultimately, after several minutes of torture, I decided that I didn't think it was valid, but also, if it were valid, it would expose me to an enormous H hook on the triple with both H's still unplayed, and I would lose my advantage immediately if Harshan had one. So I played Gates for 43, tacking on my S for 9 extra points, and to cut off row 14 as a potential bingo lane for Harshan. To my dismay, he immediately hit the G I had been considering with Vigneron, a word of French origin for a vine grower, for 86 points, taking a 19-point lead. At this point, I'm thinking that I might have just made a game-losing mistake. He didn't even have an H, so I could have played a goddess with impunity. 
But in reality, I had made the right choice not to play the phony word, which Harshan surely would have challenged, and Gates was the best move available to me. In the moment, I was frustrated and I lost focus. Down on both the scoreboard and the clock, I had another difficult decision. My two choices here were Batty and Abaya. Batty scores 30, leaving AAS, while Abaya scores 25, leaving DS, but setting up my S in a very aggressive way. However, I ultimately settled on Batty, despite the normally troublesome duplicated A's, because the unseen tiles to me were so incredibly light on vowels, making the AAS leave much more valuable than usual. Harshan played light for 30, regaining his lead, and here's the evidence that the Vigneron sequence clearly got to me. I quickly played batch down from the B of batty for 33, but this was a big mistake. I made this play in part because my tile tracking showed that there were three tiles in the bag, so I could play batch while preserving some chances of playing a bingo next turn. But there were actually only two tiles left, so I lost out on all my threats of drawing a bingo that Harshan would need to deal with in the endgame. I had even counted the tiles in the bag the previous turn to ensure I didn't make a mistake like this, but I wasn't careful enough. I could also have considered blocking an X spot here with two huge ones available on the board, but if Harshan had had a play like Locks ready to go down under Vigneron, it would have played alongside easier as well. In retrospect, I think I like just playing Ah underneath the B and A of Batty, ensuring I have seven tiles to work with next turn to threaten bingos Harshan might struggle to block. Instead, Harshan went first in the endgame, and he had only one winning play here, Kivas, forming Nek, a South African word for a valley in a mountain range. This move blocks my desired play of Banjax through the N of Reigned, which would score well and shed both of my high-scoring letters. I'd still play my X for 53, but he'll answer with Fiad through the E of Easier, catching me with 20 points from my J, A, and S to win by just two points. That's a really tricky sequence though, and Harshan made his second best move instead of Keefs, still blocking Banjax and saving Coved in the upper right. It's a good sequence, but in this case, the second best move shouldn't have been good enough. I have one winning response here. Je through the E of easier, blocking coved, using up both of my high point tiles, and forcing Harshan to take many fewer points with Devo, ultimately giving me a three point win. But remember, I had miscounted the tiles in the bag when I played Batch. After Keefs, I realized I had a big problem. My tracking showed that Harshan should have D-E-O-V, but he only had three tiles on his rack. So, with what little time I had remaining, I checked the V's, then the D's, and then the E's. And I counted one V on the board, three D's on the board, and eleven E's on the board. I even double-checked my count of the E's, confirming my initial count of 11, but tragically I somehow failed to count that 12th E on the board. Thinking for sure that Harshan was holding D-E-V, I started testing endgame sequences to see which one would win, and to my dismay, I discovered that none of them worked. He had Dev for 20 points alongside Easier, and Deve for 15 through the E of Ermelins, and neither of my X plays or Je will score enough. After filling my score sheet with desperate chicken scratch, trying to come up with a winning plan, I grudgingly played Ox, hoping he somehow wouldn't think of Deve. When he played Coved instead, revealing that he had an O and not an E, my heart sank. When I took another look at the endgame with this new information, I quickly spotted my winning move of Je, and I realized I'd just blown one of the biggest games of my life. I went on to lose my next three games despite playing pretty well, 
running my losing streak to five games in total. I salvaged a couple more games after that, but the damage was done, and when the dust settled, I ended up finishing seventh overall. This round 26 game was a huge turning point in the tournament for me as well as for Harshan, who would go on to claim one of the two finalist spots with eventual champion David Eldar taking the other. But making mistakes is part of the game, and I'm proud to have been the top finisher from the United States and to come in seventh in such a challenging field. So while my first ever world championship didn't end the way I would have wanted, it was still an amazing experience, and it won't be my last. If you really want to make me feel better after this tough loss, one thing you could do is subscribe to my channel for more Scrabble content. Or if you are subscribed already, drop me a like on this video or leave a comment. It really helps me out. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.